Welcome back to Monaco and the Poker Stars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT. Day two continues. 164 players remain, 29 to lose until we are in the money with 135 getting paid. There's a very good chance that during this level, we will be kicking off our world famous bubble coverage as we get close to the 4.5 million euro prize pool in this year's main event. 922 started, 164 remain, and we have a new feature table. We have got the start of day chip leader, Sylvain Mazza. We've got Dario Sammartino, a very well-respected Italian pro. We've got a former Monte Carlo finalist, Dominikas Kamazinas, and we've got from Team Pro, the reigning PSPC champ, Ramon Colilius. The PSPCC. I like it. Samartino has four bet. Okay, this is getting frisky. Samartino, the original raiser, 7.5K. The three bet from Mazza, start of day chip leader, 17K. Samartino re-raises to 42K, and we still don't know what they have. Here we go. It's Queen Jack against Queens. And that is an adventurous four bet from the Queen Jack offsuit. Uh, if I'm Mazza in the cutoff, we are very deep here, but... A hand like Queens, it's much less of an attractive flat call than Kings or Aces. Needs a little bit more protection. Ooh. It's a four-bet pot. The open-ended straight draw for Samatino. And these I are guess... two deep stacks, Braggy. Yeah, I guess when you four-bet, this is about as good as you get for the Queen Jack, other than you know flopping trips or the straight itself. But picking up an open-ender, it's going to be enough for Samatino to continue. But as you mentioned, James, we are very deep here. Martino out of position, but with the pre-flop betting lead, continues for 35k. And how do you play this if you're Mazza? I think given the depth pre-flop, and obviously at this point, uh, we're most likely just going to see a call. Shouldn't be too worried about your opponent for betting 10s or 9s this deep. I think they would just call. You do have to be a little bit concerned about the kings or aces, but you're ahead of plenty of uh, plenty of other hands. The problem with raising is if you raise this flop and get shoved on, you don't really want to raise fold and raise calling it off. You're probably only getting it in against kings or aces. As unfortunate as it is, I think this is one where Especially with the queen of clubs, it's a little bit more attractive, right? Because you can continue on a club turn as well. But it's one of those where you still have to proceed with a bit of caution and just hope that you don't see a king or an ace on the turn. Caution, my friend, has been thrown to the wind because Massa has just raised to 75k. And as we can see, this is actually going to put San Martino's hand... In a pretty awkward spot, I mean, he does have the open end of straight draw, but this pot is already fairly sizable. I wouldn't expect him to fold. Most likely calling, trying to get there on the turn. He's got 40,000 with 200k already in the middle. Holy. Wow. wow! I mean, this has just been a mega raising war, pre-flop and on the flop. This so is the most aggressively played Queen Jack I've seen in quite some time. Incredible. Samartino has shot for 273k. And we can see Samaz has got 246 behind. It's around 200k to call. So it's for most of his chips. And yes, he's got the best hand, but considering the pre-flop action, you're going to be legitimately worried about kings and aces here. Yeah, it's exactly what we just spoke about. As soon as you, if you raise this board in a four-bet part and then get shoved on, that's got to be your main concern is kings or aces, which you're drawn to two outs against. That said, folding queens here is just going to make you throw up in the mouth a little bit. Deux cent treize mil. That's two hundred and seventy-three thousand chips, and that's a lot of chips indeed. I had no idea you were so linguistically talented. I just copied the dealer. She said it first. 
Oh. I'm, che I'm cheating, James. I'm cheating. Four bet pre, and now San Martino semi bluff shoving the flop. Shot clock not in play till tomorrow. How long is Mazza going to take over this decision? I would be very surprised to see him find a lay down here. But again, he, it's, this is the, the situation you kind of create for yourself in, in raising on the flop. Wow. The best hand is folded. And Darius Sammartino's pure aggression takes down that pot. And he's up to 440,000, nearly 150 big blinds now. So we have Sammartino on the main stage with 441k. Let's look at some of the other big stacks out in the field. Starting with Rustam Hajayev. Hajayev currently playing 500k. A reminder that the average stack right now is 178k. We saw Army Bearer make a deep run in the PCA main event at the start of this year. He's got 520k right now. And then we have our chip leader, Julian Martini, the PSPC runner-up, in a hand against Mikita Bodzikovsky. The board, not sure if you can see it, is ace, tray, deuce, seven. It's a rainbow board. And it looks like Martini has bet the turn for 41,000. Bodzikovsky folds. And after winning that pot, Julian Martini is going to be playing 710,000. Still the dominant chip leader at this stage of day two. Queen Jack against Jack 10, Domination Nation. but it's domination rotation as Ramon pairs is 10. Continues with a bet here. And again, this is a situation where Kalilius facing a raise and a continuation bet, most likely to just call. Doesn't want to isolate himself against only better hands. We do see him call off to a turn. The turn is an ace. It's going to look like a scare card. But some of the time, the preflop aggressor is going to check back with some of their ace high hands. And it is particularly easy for them to bet again here with hands, as we see, queen-jack, king-queen, king-jack, maybe, maybe some hearts as well. So it's a turn that can become a, quite easy to overbluff. I would, would be surprised to see Kalilius give up his 10 just yet. So the C bet was 11,500. This second bet on the turn is 20,500. Ramon calls again, eight of diamonds on the river, does not change anything. Ramon has a lock on this, but has less than pot behind. And we can see that Karmazinas has sized here so that he'll be able to jam the river for just around six eighths of the pot if he wants to carry on with this bluff. He is going to have plenty of aces that he'll be value betting. He does call time on that one. Kalilius will win the showdown. So Ramon chipping up to around 150K, close to a 50 big blind stack with 156 <laughs> players remaining on day two here in Monte Carlo, the main event of the stop of the European Poker Tour.
ace eight against sixes here. The Bracken opening with the pocket pair. Samatino calling with the suited ace eight. Round to Kamazinas in the big blind. And he calls as well. Kamazinas defending with 7 5 and three way to this ace high flop, which also has a six on it. And that's good news for Jordan Verbracken. And again, James, take a look at those stack sizes 300,000 behind for Verbracken. If we see something, obviously an ace or an eight, but if we see a spade on the turn, we could see quite the pot start to develop here. Well, Deuce of Diamonds won't do much to improve San Martino, but he does still have a pretty reasonable top pair. So the Bracken continued flop for 15k. And surprised to see it go check, check on the turn. Yeah, nice bit of pot control from San Martino. Did the Bracken just check again? This is a play that's potentially going to pay dividends, though, because you might not expect him to check anything better twice. May feel confident now, value betting his ace eight, trying to get called by something like king 10 or king queen, but continued the flop with a gut shot and now makes second pair. And he goes for a pretty small sizing too, which means that assuming for Bracken raises, he may feel like his small sizing induced that raise and could convince himself to pay it off. Yeah, Samatino's bet 15K into 57K. San Martino may also feel like he's not going to check anything that strong at the river and risk it checking through. There is the check raise from the Bracken. 59,000. If anyone at this table is good enough to get away from this, though, Sprague, it is Dario Sammartino. Right. It's one of those really frustrating spots where it's so hard for opponents to check raise river as a bluff. But you do still have a top pair that check back the turn, and you did bet the river really small. He's going to have to try and put the pieces of this puzzle together. He needs to also find a hand that continued on the flop and now wants to bluff. So it would have to be something like... Jack 10, maybe, that turns itself into a bluff. He doesn't like it, but he convinced himself to call. The Bracken gets paid off. And you saw that coming, Spraggy. Yeah, really nice check raise at the river. I mean, given the size of the pot, any bet that he makes is not going to pay off as, as large as uh, the check raise will. Picks up another big hand here. And is raising it up again. He's 
going to run into a bit of resistance, though. Kalilius on the button with the two eights. He'll call. And we are heads up to a flop. And it's king high. That's a really, really small bet from Mazza. Just 6,000. I don't think Kalilius would have been going anywhere anyway. Just one overcard to his pair of eights, but for such a good price, he's definitely seeing a turn. The real decision now is going to be if Mazza continues on the 10 of clubs. Two flush draws out there. And Mazza fires again. 13,000. Again, pretty small. And for the price, Kalilius still ahead of Queen Jacks and Jack Nines and Ace Jacks. All of these broadways that don't make the pair. As well as some potential bluffs from both flush draws. Which means that he's going to reach for chips. And it looks like he's off to a river. We can see that he is way behind. Everything bricks. You've got to anticipate Mazza looks for that third street of value here. Well, he's emptying the clip here. He was the pre-flop aggressor. Remember, he raised him under the gun. He's bet flop. He's bet turn. And now 19K on the river. A tad small, I guess. What's that? One third pot? Yeah, he's gone small over all three streets. I think from Kalilius' perspective, once he takes a sizing, everything bricks. It's fairly unlikely that he's bluffing at this point. But if he's going to size small in general, maybe he does size like this with his bluffs as well. Kalilius flatting on the button is going to have a lot of better hands. He's going to have some sets. He's going to have king-10 for two pair. He's going to have king-queen, king-jack as well. So facing three streets, unless he thinks Maz is getting really out of line, eights is a hand he might want to let go, but wow. he is very suspicious. Calls down three small bets, in fairness. Does get shown the ace-king. So Ramon loses that one and is down to 30 bigs. Maz up to nearly 100 bigs. All the aces are out. Roper opening here with ace-10, called by Tamasauskas with ace-jack. Ramon Kolilis with ace-5. Ten players to lose to a hand-for-hand. Hand. And we will be in the money. And it's even more interesting, James, just as you say, the bubble's coming up and we've got that on-screen graphic. It's pretty interesting then to see Kalilius deciding to three bet as the shorter of the three stacks here with the ace five. Tamazowskis will be out of position to impose flop may not want to put his tournament life or close to being on the line this close to the money he is going to make the call though well that's not a bad flop for ramon not at all and again once you three better hand like ace five this is really the sort of thing that you're looking for Not too much behind here, 64,000 chips in the middle. It is the ace five of Kalilius that has position. Certainly see him opt for a continuation bet here. Doesn't have to go big, given that if he has aces or kings, he can just go small on the flop and move all in on the turn pretty comfortably. And a bet of less than a third of the pot is going to get some better hands to fold. 
when you're bluffing. So a hand as we see, like Ace Jack. Well, so much for a small bet. He's all in. That'll get the job done too. Boom. And Roman Kalilius picks up some chips as we close in on that money bubble. Twenty minutes left on the clock. One hundred and forty players remaining. I'm on with king queen suited. Limps on the button. San Martino in the small. Bizzano yeah, sure. checks his option. <laughs> eight, eight, tray. So Ramon still with the best hand. King high. Interesting to see him implement that limp on the button. You'll notice that he has the smaller stack versus the blinds. So he probably doesn't want to get into a spot where he raises and gets three bet. It also keeps some of these dominated queens in. As we can see, when he pairs the turn, San Martino is in the pot and dominated. Check, check again. Kalilius really playing pot control on this one. Wouldn't be surprised to see San Martino look for some value on his hand now. He's reaching for chips. So we have a pot of 12,000. And San Martino bets full pot. You have a 10, I have a queen. Nope, he also has a queen and he has a better kicker. He has won this pot. Two more eliminations. Arseny Kamatsky, last year's Sochi main event winner, has gone. Also eliminated, Winifred Yu. And that means we are down to 138 players. Two off the bubble, three off the money, Spraggy. Indeed. James, do you have any notes on any of these players? Um, no. No. Nope. Sorry. Actually, I, I do have a note on you, but yeah. uh, Ace Queen against Ace Queen, part two of our world famous bubble coverage. Remember that red bubble will burst. It will pop when we get down to one three five. Pretty interesting spot here for Kalilius, even though they've both got the same hand. Obviously, uh, it'll be Kalilius who's at risk if all the chips find their way into the middle. He's not going to be particularly happy about being all in and at risk at this stage. Oh, I changed my mind. He definitely is. He's all in. <laughs> Might not be happy about it, though. Maybe a spot. San Martino's been fairly aggressive. He feels like he'll be putting in some lighter three bets. Has to make the shove. There it is. On their backs. So, Spraggy, we're going to try and time this one slightly differently. 
Assuming that this does result in a chop pot, after we queue, Joe and I are going to take a slightly longer pause than usual. Two beats. Exactly, to allow the delay to catch up. So hopefully we will all be in sync and we will all be in harmony. No, 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 no. I see what's happening here. You're setting me up for a solo run. No. Nope. <laughs> this is a setup. Nope. We I'm take it way up. too seriously, Spraggy. Benjamin, okay. when have you ever known me miss an opportunity to sing? James, I trust you. I'm ready. Cool. Vincent trusted me <laughs> once. Don't think he will ever again. He's tough to get back, too, Vinton. By the way, we're assuming that a chop is a done deal here, but we've seen some real dirty things happen in the past. Less than 1% is less than 1%. Perfect. Okay. Okay, it's so happening. let's let's do this right. This will be a chop pot, and you know what they say. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, chop pot. pot. Absolute shambles. <laughs> Oh, I love that James Hardigan Vladimir Putin mashup. And is the three peat still alive? Victoria Curran Mitchell all in with King Queen against Seth Davis's ace king. No, it's not looking good. No queen on the river. That seals Vicky's fate. Oh, the bubble. She will remain only a two time EPT winner for now. So with Vicky's elimination, we're down to 137. Hold your horses because Roman Harold is out in 137th. We're down to 136. Stop the clock. And we are going to have to break a table and make sure that all the remaining tables are balanced before we officially, officially go hand for hand because we have reached 136 players. We are on the pure bubble in the EPT Monte Carlo main event. The next player out will leave with nothing. Everyone else will lock up at least 8,800 euros. And of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is guaranteed to make a profit. This was a single re-entry event. There will be some players who are in for two bullets and even a min cash is not going to see them make a positive ROI. Don't worry, we're going to get the action restarted. Toby's in position and he's ready to tell the players what they've been waiting to hear. Okay, players, we're on the bubble. 136 players remaining, 135 in the money. We're going to continue hand for hand. So if we lose two players during the hand for hand process, the player who entered the hand with the most chips will take the highest finishing position if two players are eliminated from the same table, if two players are eliminated from different tables, the position will be split. I'm gonna ask all players to remain in your seats, please, during the hand of hand process. The press and the staff need to move around the room. It also makes things much smoother for us. And for the dealers, if you have an all-in and a call, very important, if you have an all-in and a call, please freeze the action, and players, please keep your cards face down. Okay, so 136. Dealers, one hand, please. Julian Martini's in a hand against Mikita Bodzikovsky at one of the outer tables. We pick up the action on the turn where Martini has bet 35,000. Bodzikovsky calls. And we saw the board there. It is four, ten, ten, five. Two spades, two diamonds, nine of hearts on the river. <coughs> Bodzikovsky checks. So action's on Martini. He bet the turn. Where do I know this guy from? Oh, he shoves. Okay. All in. Ooh, nice shot, dealer. He was the PSPCRU, correct? Correct. No, I don't think it's from that. Do you want me to go buy tickets? What?
Nikita Bajikowski, so hot right now. Yeah, One of the best in the game. Got those AirPods in his ear, and we've already talked about this. They have the ability to make anyone who wears them look like a complete plank. <laughs> There's something about ear pods. For a moment there, I thought he was making the call. Uh, we know that Martini is, if not still, the overall chip leader among the chip leaders, so this is all in to call for Bozyakovsky. Either way, on the bubble, you'd love to see it. Put him to a decision. <laughs> that looks like I'm going to fold smile. You know you were saying about the uh, there's something about Mary thing yesterday? Yeah. When you only have one AirPod in, it yeah. is exactly like that. Oh, what is that, hair gel? It's like a little swimmer that couldn't quite make its way in. Sam Greenwood obviously <laughs> reading about endgame spoilers right now. Oh, Captain Marvel. Oh. Black Panther. Thanks for the memories. This is uh Come on, tell me something. This is taking a while. It's a mind game, you love it. You really want it. There is a camera. You want it so bad, come on. You know you want it. Just a simple one, you have suited or suited. As long as this entertaining banter continues, I don't care how long he tanks for. In the words of the Black Eyed Peas, I have a feeling that Bodjakovsky is going to fold. I mean, is literally the entire room waiting for this right now? Yeah. Unless there's already been an all-in the call, which has been held for right. the for this hand to play out, but right. so either way, I don't think there is though. I think this might be the last hand in progress. Hey guys, it's this one over here. <coughs> he's motioned about five or six times as if he's going to fold. So, like so often when people do that, they're just never ever going to find the call. I mean, you never know, but I'm with James. Just realize he's wearing a rather rude t shirt. Well, if he was fresh to begin with, he's certainly gone stale by now. He's taken a t shirt long time. <laughs> Should point out that all this time the clock is running. There it goes.
players, we have two all-in calls. We have an all-in call on table number seven, and we have an all-in call on table number nine. So I'm here at table number nine. We have two players remaining, Felipe and James. Felipe is our all-in player. We already have a board, and uh, we already have four cards on the board. A 10, a queen, a king, and a nine. So once again, players, Felipe is our all-in player. Well, now come all the navel gazers. So Felipe, you ready? Can we see your cards, please? Felipe shows a king, king. Oh, he's not Felipe drawing has dead. Trip kings. And James shows Jack, king, a straight. Is it bad that I want the kings to re-get there? Final card, please. Needs the board to pair, but Final it's an card ace. Is an ace. We have lost a player. That's Congratulations, it. everybody. The bubble you have just cashed. Congratulations, everybody. No we do have another bubbles. All in call. So there is another all in, and Toby's going to make his way across the room. Kings against King Jack. We have another all in call on table number seven. If we lose the player on table number seven, Felipe will split 135th. So he's sweating half of a min cash now. If we get a double up at this other table, he will go out on the pure bubble and cash for zero euros. Ah, oh, it's Pablo Malogno. I think it's the player in the one seat, Oshri Lamani, who's the at-risk player here. Okay, so we're on table number seven. We have Oshri and Pablo. Oshri is our all-in player. So can we see your cards, please, Oshri? Which one was on the belly button? Oshri shows two aces, hey. ace of spades and the ace of hearts. James shows two jacks, jack of diamonds and the jack of clubs. So once again, Oshri with the two aces is our all-in player. It's looking really good for just one bubble boy. Yeah, James has Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, actually. I think his name's Pablo. Can we see the flop, please? So the flop is seven, six, five, rainbow. Turn card, please. Turn is a king. Just has to fade a jack on the Final river. Final card, please. Double Final up. Final card is a five. So Oshri, one hand with two aces. So once again, players, congratulations. 135 plays remaining. Except for you, the one guy who did There is no more hand for hand. However, dealers and players, Oh, oh, we're drowning him out. Okay. Philippe Narboni has Once bubbled again, the Ipsy Monte Carlo on his back. Please <laughs> remain at your table. So Once again, congratulations, everybody. No more hand for hand. Dealers, start, please. Are you done? Good. So, the post bubble bust out bonanza begins. Payout information scrolling along the bottom of your screen. So we're at 2K, 4K blinds. Kalilia starts with around 30 bigs and an A6 suited for a raise. King Jack offsuit. Staying snug in the small blind folds. And Karmazinus is in for a defend with Joe's favorite hand. 96. That was the year I didn't get ditched at prom. Check, check on the flop. Kalilius has got plenty of showdown value with the ace high. 
Taking and one step closer to that. Picks up the nut. Spade draw as well. Will he take the free card? I feel like, oh, I was going to say no. Luckily, I didn't have to answer that. Whoops. And it's a nine on the river. For Karmazinus. Very unfortunate for Clelius here. And he might even be in a position where he wants to call off a river bet too. Karmazinus defending a lot of hands in the big blind, plenty of which have still missed this board. An eight, a four, and a three, all pretty likely to bet the turn from the big blind. So unless Karmazinus rivered a nine, Kalilius can still be ahead with the ace high. He's facing 14,000 chips. I like this sizing. I feel like this sizing is pretty well suited for getting a call from ace high. It didn't work, but. Yep, not this time. Kalilius gets out of the way. I mentioned it's the post bubble bust out bonanza right there. The payout desk gonna be very busy for the next few minutes. Benny Glazer out of here. The guy we just saw was Rostislav Vodnikov. And right there in the red hoodie, that guy's name is Slim. That's hilarious. Will he please stand up? <laughs> he was standing next to Cosmos Yamanak. That's Roman Perret. And uh, another French hero, Paul Tedeschi. As you can see, the field now down to one, two, nine as the bonanza continues. All right, we got a couple of more bust outs to show you guys. There goes Sam Grafton. Wonder how much he's going to tip. He's out in 123rd place, and Ader Takashi Murata out of here in 122nd. It sounds like the magical words you'd have to say to, like, unlock a tomb. Ader Takashi Murata. All right, Ramon with a real hand for once. Ace 10 suited, makes it the standard 9K we've been seeing at this table during this level. Looks like just a call from Bozano. Was that announced? It's pretty interesting if so. I mean, this is a 30 big blind stack with just more from Bozano. Certainly would expect him to Put in a re-raise, three bet, call it off. He's got a very strong hand. It's not like he's facing a really tight opponent or somebody opening under the gun. It's under the gun plus two, sure. You'd certainly expect ace king of diamonds, ace king suited, even ace king off, try and play for stacks here. Five, four, deuce, two spades. And as we spoke about a few hands before, these low connected boards, always usually in favor of the big blind. They have all of the two pairs and well. sets. Ropert is somehow, Roper, I'm sure his name is, is, somehow the favorite? Well, he's got the double gut shot straight draw, a three or a seven, plus two live cards. And this is the problem for Bozano, right? He had a very, very profitable three bet preflop. He didn't take it. And on this board, he's sandwiched between two players facing a bet. He's got the wheel draw, but no backdoor diamonds. Things can get pretty awkward for him from here. Like, I know the mindset here. It's a... I'll just call. I'll flop top pair and I'll get it all. Yeah, and I'll keep a seven in on an ace high board and then I'll, I'll stack in. But it doesn't always go that way. Flopping top pair is so hard. Even when you start with the biggest card. And now he's out of the pot, right? And even at this point, he still had the best hand. He's very, very likely to have the best hand preflop. So investing more chips never going to be a problem. And now he gets the flop. He still has the best hand, but because of his circumstances, he has to fold it. Roper doesn't fold. He's off to a turn and pairs the eight. And that's why he had all the equity. Lots of ways this, to get there. 
Yeah, this board now is getting even worse for Kalilius because these hands, 8-6, 8-7, 6-7, they all improve. A lot of the pairs have at least a straight draw with them, so we do see him slow down. He makes his ace, though. That's the best hand for Ramon Kalilius. PSPC champion and now holder of top pair in a pot currently worth 63,000 chips. It looks like it goes check, check. It does. It does go check, check, and rich get richer. So let's look at the stacks of the players we've been watching over the course of the last two levels during the bubble and during the post-bubble bust-out bonanza. Spraggy, thank you very much for your contributions over the last two levels, dude. Thank you for being part thank of our world-famous bubble coverage. Thank you very much for having me. Always a pleasure. So Spraggy will be back tomorrow, as will Finson Hand. And Nick Walsh will be making his debut on the live stream from the EPT. It's been a fun day, too. We're into the money. And the action continues tomorrow. We will see you then. But for now, from Benjamin Sprague, Finton Hand, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from Monaco.